hear me? Good morning. It's great to see you again. We're in the midst of another great Sunday. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me clearly? Testing. Can you hear me clearly? Okay. Just a slider. Anything else? Just a slider. Testing, testing. Right there. Can you hear me clearly in here? Bring down your slider just a little bit. Thank you. Good morning. Bring down your... Come down a little bit with your cords. Thank you. Good morning. It's good to see you again this morning. A message from last week. We've been in the place of how we feel. And the way our nation has been feeling. Let's bring my mic up just a little bit more. And how we feel has a lot to do with what we do. And how we handle and process the things that happen in our lives. We're almost into Christmas and the nation is still reeling from a pandemic and so many other elements that have been thrown into this also tumultuous day. See, but, but we all have this thing that we love most. What is it that you love most? What is it that you spend most of your time doing? Is it people? Is it money? Is it stuff? Is it trouble? Is it stress? The things we love most. Is it love? Are you a person who loves love? Is it hate? Are you a person who loves discipline? Cars, trains, trucks, bikes. Are you that person? What is it that you love most? Is it ink? And yet, whoever thought ink was a thing. Ink is a thing. Is it writing? Is it producing? Is it entertainment? Is it performing? What is that thing that you love most? What is your, today's message would be so deemed, heart stop? Today's message would be so called heart song. What is that thing that takes you to a place of love? Today's message is called again, Heart Song. We thank you for tuning in today with us. We're back online. Last week we had a celebration and we didn't broadcast that celebration. But our 60th, I'm sorry, our 16th year celebration was last week. So we celebrated that and we didn't broadcast it. But this week we're back on track. Today's message is called Heart Song. What is your heart song? What takes you to a place? What gives you a feeling? I hope today that your heart song is God. I hope Jesus is the reason for your heart song today. Because there are so many things that we are inundated with in our day and time that there has to be a love in your heart for something. I'm hoping that that love is Jesus the Christ today. That he is your heart song.
So as I thought about when I wrote this message, I found myself over in Psalms. David had written another song. As you know, the Psalms was written by six authors. They sat. David was, was, David was one of those authors. But he was the one who wrote songs. Praises unto our Lord. He wrote songs of information. Songs as unto the Lord. Songs. Psalms. And he also wrote psalms of wisdom. But everything that he wrote, it had to do with the song that David was a musician. Can you hear me? Am I going out? But today, since David was starting to hear me, How's this written? Can you hear me clearer? Okay. So today, the purpose of this song is to find out where your heart is and where, what your heart song is and what causes your heart to skip a beat. Hopefully, that heart is skipping a beat because of the love of Jesus the love of the Lord his advice his intention for us has always been greatness his his love for us has always been fantastic he's always loved us regardless of anything that we've ever done uh, regardless of whoever we thought we was it was always Jesus he's always loved us we talked a few weeks ago about that reciprocal love that kind of love that when someone loves you and if you love them back. Today, Jesus the Christ has shown a love that none of us can adorn to. A love that is unconditional. Question for you today. Are you an unconditional lover or are you a lover when things are going right? Are you a lover that has learned or are learning how to love unconditionally? Thank you. Thank you for playing for me, daughter. So today, I wanted to talk about the heart song and the song that your heart plays, the song that your heart is, the song that you are as a person and the personage of Jesus Christ and the heart that he's always shown us and given us your heart song today. I'm hoping today that your heart is not all congested and it's not filled with unforgiveness and it's not filled with things in your heart that causes us not to love, not to reach out, not to be a fervent lover of God's people. No, I'm not going to say it's always easy to love. But I can say that you can love, but it has to be a piece of your heart. It has to be a practice to love. Love doesn't come automatically, and this is what we find out to be true. But love definitely can happen, but it has to be a practice of love. It has to be a thing of love in your heart that even though, even if, it doesn't matter if somebody loves you back, it has to be a love in your heart. So today we hope and we pray that your heart is in the place of where you are learning to love today. Now I find myself over in Psalms today. Psalms 19 and 7. And David writes about God's, about God's law is perfect. Now, I guess as a person, as a human, I'm looking for that perfect love, that perfect love. And I think 
in our humanistic form and, and, and the frailties of our humanistic nature that it's impossible to have that perfect love. But what I know that God has a perfect love for us, even if we can fathom the kind of love that he has. But love has to be a thing that we have to try to do. A love that we have to be invested in. I think that's a good word for today. We have to invest in love. And when you invest in love, then that means you try to love regardless of how any situation may look. It has to be an invested love. An invested love is when you find a love regardless of how any situation may come or how it looks that your love is invested. So you want to invest in love today. If you're here today or you're watching today, I hope that you're watching, that you're, that you're learning how to invest in love. And when you invest in love, then that means that you have something to lose. If I don't lose, then I'm not invested. If I don't love, I'm not invested. But I'm invested in love because I have an interest. I have an interest to love today. Heart song. What is your heart song? I know so many people, I'm a biker and I love bikes, but, and, 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 and a lot of bikers I know, Sunday is their time to ride, Sunday. It's their time to ride all over the city and all over the country and long rides and long country rides and then back home. But, but then I have to find out, is that your heart song? Or does God get the glory from your heart song? Is your heart song in ministry or is your heart song in stuff? Is your heart song in your children or is your heart song in the Lord? Does the Lord come first in your life when you make a decision? Oh, this is, this is good stuff today. Oh, over in Psalms 19 and 7. David writes a song. I, I, I could have started. I could have started in one, but I decided to start in seven because it talks about God's perfect love for us. But as we spoke three weeks ago, I think it was three weeks ago, we talked about hearts because I think that our hearts carry everything and we feel everything. Our hearts lead us to do things. And many of us won't move unless we're led by our hearts. But we say, I'm waiting on the leading of the Lord. Actually, we're waiting on the leading of our heart to see if our heart will lead us to move in God's way. Today, what does your heart song say? Today, how does your heart beat? What makes your heart beat? Is it the Lord? Or is it everything else around us? You say, well, why are you talking about hearts again? Because hearts are so very important in everything we do. All of our decisions, all of our mindsets, it's locked up in our hearts. And it, and it moves us. It stops us. It stalemates us. The movement of our hearts are the things that cause us to love and not love. Over in 7, Psalms 19 and 7, once again, nine, Psalms 19 and 7, uh, David writes, he says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart, meaning the wisdom of the Lord is right. Joicing the heart. And, 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 and when, you, when you look for the wisdom of the Lord, it is his wisdom that causes your heart to rejoice because it is his wisdom that takes us down the right aisles, the right aisles, the right way, the right direction. And all those directions that are in us, all the fuss that's in us, all the troubles that is in us, if we give those things unto the Lord, his guiding... Oh, this is, this is good stuff. He says, the statues of the Lord, which means the wisdom of the Lord. Are you worried about something today? 
Is there something ailing you today? Is there something on your mind, something on your heart? Is your heart song someplace else? Because if your heart song is on the Lord, it is the leading of the Lord that will bring you out of whatever you're into. Whatever you're lost in, the love, the wisdom, the statues of the Lord, he says. It's the statues of the Lord. Or, 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 or shall I change that word or, or, or put, a, put a slice on that word and say, the wisdom of the Lord. All right. The wisdoms of the Lord, all right. The statues of the Lord, all right. He says in eight. He says, rejoicing the heart. It is that rejoice that I'm speaking of today in your heart song. What is your heart song? Where is your heart today? Where have you left it last night? Did you pick it up? Did you bring it on the room? Those of you who have signed in, by the way, we're coming from our, from our uh, uh, ministry page on Facebook now, straight from the page into every place else, and soon from our website. We'll be streaming there and then broadcasting again, once again. Back to what we were talking about. Over in 80 says, the statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing in the heart, the commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. We can speak about number eight and go home. Because he, all these things amount to God's wisdom. And God's wisdom in our lives is God's guidance in our lives. God's guidance in our life causes us to move in, in better ways, better moves, better directions. And those directions cause us the heart to be merry. Lord, I'm so glad that you came into my life today. And because of you, my moves are greater. Lord, when you entered my life, I begin to think clearer. Lord, when you entered my life, everything else around my life weren't as important as the love and the guidance and the wisdom that you've shown me. That will cause an enlightenment, number eight says. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure. Enlightening the eyes. Opening the eyes. Are your eyes closed today? Where are your eyes? Are your eyes open to wisdom? Are your eyes ready to hear? Is your heart ready to absorb what the Lord is ready to give? He's open in wisdom and ready to pour in the wisdom that you need to move out of directions of discouragement. Is there anybody watching today who has any amount of discouragement in you? Is there anybody watching today is there anything in you that is discouraging? Are you sad? Is there anything, uh, is, is there anything that, that causes you to think on it too hard? Is your heart God's? Is he your heart's song? Have you given it to him? Here's another one. Have you asked him about that situation? Have you asked him about all the loves that you have? Have you asked him? When I'm feeling some kind of way, I've learned to go straight to God. I've learned to take my fears. I've learned to, stay, to take my questions. I've learned to take my doubts. I've learned to take my insecurities, a big word in the ministry, insecurities to God. Because every time I take it to he gives me wisdom on how to handle myself. Let's go over to nine. He says, he says, the fear of the Lord. Could somebody give me something to drink? Thanks. He says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. 
all together. Whatever is in your heart, whatever it is that concerns you, he says in number 9b, the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Thank you. Now, number 10, he speaks, he says, he says, David writes, he, he continues in the song. He says, more to be desired are they than gold. More to be desired are they than gold, he says. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and honeycomb. Not honey of the honeycomb, honey and the honeycomb. What is your heart song today? What does your heart say? Where are you in your heart song today? In 11, he says, moreover, by them is your, is your servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. Again, the chapter in the song, the psalm, speaks of God's wisdom. Keeping God's commanding, keeping God's wisdom, listening to God, asking God, getting God's opinion. So, 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 so David's writing about how you feel about the Lord, how you feel about his wisdom, about what he tells you, about his guidance, about his direction. And, 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 and I never remember asking God something about direction and the directions were wrong. You know how you can be traveling and you're lost in some other city and you ask somebody directions and they say, well, all you have to do is to go down three lights three red lights, four green lights, you'll see a big building, a corner store, and a gas station, and you're there. And you write down these directions to the T. And when you get to the destination, you're lost still. But I never remember God giving me direction that had me lost. I remember listening to people giving me direction that had me lost and confused and ready to quit. But I never remember God giving me directions that had me in a place of stalemate that had me lost. I never remember God losing me. What's your heart song today? Is God your heart song? Is he your final destination? Because you are hearts, you are God's heart song. But is he your heart song today? Those of you watching, that's a question for you too. Something for you to, for, for you to think about. Something for you to take into consideration of the song of David in 19 and 7. And going to 10, he says, more to be desired are they than gold. Yea, God's wisdom. Yea, than much fine gold, God's wisdom. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb, not honey of the honeycomb, and honey and the honeycomb. It's a play on words. Not, not, not honey, I've heard the song, honey of the honeycomb. No, he says honey and the honeycomb. That is sweet. He says, moreover, by them is your sweet, is, is your servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. Twelve. Who can understand his errors. He says, cleanse you me from secret faults. There are certain kinds of faults that we can have that can be forgiven. 
But there are such things as faults that cannot be forgiven, mistakes that cannot be corrected. But there are mistakes that can be corrected. And in God's wisdom, we can get to the point where we can make mistakes that can be corrected, but not dwelling on the ones that cannot be corrected, the ones that cannot be repaired, the ones that cannot be fixed. We're talking about the ones today that can be fixed. There are sins that can be forgiven. Sins, sins that can be fixed and there are sins that cannot be forgiven. Today, in God's wisdom, the reason why he is my heart song today is because I want to be to the place in God to where when I make a, a mistake and my sins and in my forgiveness, God will forgive me because I know how far. Have you ever been in a place to where you don't know how far to go with people? Have you ever been in a place to where you don't know, no boundaries, how far I can go with you and you make a mistake every single time and you've lost those friends? Because there are some sins, there are some mistakes that are forgivable and there are some who aren't. Some of us have had friends that we've lost and we haven't talked to those friends in over 40 years because of a mistake that we made a long time ago. It was an unforgivable mistake. But those mistakes can be forgiven and they are forgiven by God even if they aren't forgiven by people. Because people may not forgive you at all, but God will forgive you every single time. We want to be to the part, to, to the point in our lives to where the sins and the mistakes that we make, make and we will make them and we will always make them no matter who you think you are, that they will be forgiven. I want to be to the place in God to where my mistakes can be forgiven with the proper amount of repentance. Lord, I repent, Lord, for that thing that I've done, Lord. Forgive me today. Now, 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 people may not forgive you of those, but God will. And he can. And the cover is you have to learn to forgive yourself in the midst of of asking for that forgiveness. I want to keep reading. He says in 13. He says keep back your servant. Also from presumptuous sins. Which is what I was just speaking of. Keep back your servant. Also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion. Over me. Then I shall be upright. David said. And I shall be innocent from the great transgression. As I spoke of before, there are transgressions that cannot be forgiven. But David asks the Lord today, he says, keep me back. Keep your servant back also from presumptuous sins. Presumptuous sins are those sins that can be forgiven. But there are some that cannot. The, he said the great transgression. In a further study in Bible study, for those of you who, 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 who study in Bible study, you find out about the, about the presumptuous sins. And then there are some called the, the, the great transgressions. And there are a difference between those two. But we're talking today, we're praying today, we're hoping today that we understand that about the presumptuous sins, that they can be forgiven with the proper amount of, of, of dedication, with the proper amount of, of, of asking forgiveness. Lord, forgive me, Lord, for these things. Because David's asking right, right before us. He says, he says, keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins, those simple sins. He says, let them not have dominion over me, Lord. Who's your heart song today? He says, he says then, shall be, then shall I be upright. Lord, I'll be upright then. He says, and, 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 and he, he says, and, 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 and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. He says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, yes, yes. my strength and my redeemer. So I'd ask you today, what is your heart song? What do you spend most of your time doing? What do you love most? What do you care for more than anything? Now, these are legitimate questions. These are homework questions for us. 
for those of you who are watching today and for those of you who are in the room today, what is your heart's tone? Before we leave today, before we leave today, what is your heart's tone? And we need to find out what those heart songs are. What is that thing that takes us to a place of relationship? I'm not here today to harp on whatever you love. Because I love bikes. And I almost don't know any man who doesn't love beautiful cars. Or any woman who doesn't love shoes. A conversation with my daughter about shoes and she decided to save more than spend on shoes. A long time ago when she was just a youth. What's your heart song? drives you what keeps you what takes you to a greater relationship what makes you meditate on the Lord is it tragedy Is it suffering? Is it hurt? Is it weakness? I hope those aren't the only things that causes your heart to sing for the Lord. A heart song is deemed as a thing of love. A heart song is a thing that you do when you're happy or when you're sad. A heart song is a thing that you do just because. I hope today that those of you in need of developing a heart song, that you develop a heart song for the Lord. And that all the other stuff you have be a gift. But you would sacrifice it all just to be close to the Lord. I know we live in a day to where money is king, to where stuff is everything. But I want to ask you today what is your heart song? Would you choose the Lord over all of that? Is your heart song a given or is it forced? I often ask my teenagers, I ask them, I said, do you love the Lord for real? Or, or, or is it by force? And I continued with my teenagers as I said, if you don't have the Lord for yourself and you don't have a heart song for him, by the time it's time to go to college, you won't even know him. And these are the conversations that I have with my teenagers because they have to have a personal relationship with Christ for themselves. Not because we forced one. Not because we made, I've seen children turn into teenagers and then adults and don't know the Lord and they grew up in church. But that's only because they didn't have a heart song to begin with for the Lord. They had a heart song for everything else. But not the Lord. I admired this song.
that David wrote. Because he's talking about her heart song. He's talking about the wisdom of the Lord. He's talking about the fear of the Lord, which means admiration of the Lord. He's talking about relationship with the Lord. Something that has to be formed by us. Because God would not force us to have a relationship with him, nor as much as you can force anybody to have one with you. It has to be something that you want. Something that you yearn for. Something that you need. today what is your heart song what is your heart song and before we leave today I'm hoping that your heart song is for the Lord you're watching today no other thing that you're doing is more important than your heart song for the Lord. No other thing that you own nor possess is greater than your heart song for the Lord. I found it out and I changed who I was. I changed my heart direction. But I know that we have to go through this life know that we have to deal with situations and circumstances that may go on in our lives but I'm hoping that you haven't lost your faith and your love in God along the way even in the midst of everything that's happening today the unrest the pandemic your own personal problems hoping that you haven't lost your love for the Lord today I want to pray before I go today Lord we thank you Lord today for your scriptures Lord we ask that you bless every scripture that we've used today Lord we thank you Lord today for the listeners for those, Lord, who listen in, Lord, online, and for those who are in the house. We thank you, Lord, for every single person and the personage of Jesus Christ in our lives. Lord, we ask, Lord, that if there's anybody, Lord, who doesn't know the Lord today, Lord, that they will come to know you. That they will change their mind change Lord the methodology and even so Lord develop a heart song for you because in the name of Jesus Lord every knee should bow the Bible actually says every knee should bow look it up shall is forth should bow Every knee should bow. Look it up. It's, 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 in, it's in there. It's in there. The Bible says every, every knee should bow. The Bible is not forceful at all. We are. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we're giving you all the praise, Lord. Because you're great. Because you're worthy. And you loved us, Lord, even when we didn't love ourselves. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And in parting, when you get down to pray, don't get up right away. Listen. We'll see you again.